Good evening, fellow Toastmasters and esteemed guests. As a few of you know who I've spoken to, for five years I served in the Royal Marines. When I was 20 years old and I first went into training, every opportunity I had to get back home and tell my friends and my family about all the fun stuff I was getting up to, I'd take and relish. I'd come back and I'd sit with them in the pub over a beer and I'd tell them about the exercises that we'd do in all the lovely places in England, Dartmoor, Senny Bridge, Wales, and always in the rain. I'd tell them how we'd go and exercise for seven, eight, nine, ten days at a time in the rain. And I'll tell them how on these exercises at times we would only have two hours sleep if we're lucky, generally interrupted and generally raining as well. <laughs> Once we got up from these two hours of interrupted sleep in the rain, we'd then pick, pick up our, our bergen, which is basically just a name for a very, very big bag full of stuff, which weighs somewhere in the region of 100 to 110 pounds. But because it'd been raining all night, add an extra 10 pounds of water onto that as well. They would then take us for a nice leisurely walk across this beautiful island that we have for distances of 20 miles or 200 miles. I can't really remember what kind of blurs in. I'll tell these stories and many others to my friends and I'll often get the same reply which would be I can do that. I'll give up. I'll tell them where to go, they asked me to do that. It's got me thinking a little bit. Here was little old scrawny Steam, and that was one of my nicknames at school. And I was doing this thing, and I was being told by the athletes from who I used to go to school with, and the people who used to be great at football and rugby and all these other things, and they were telling me that they couldn't do what I was doing. But to me, it was never an option about what I was doing. If I failed my walk, if I didn't complete a task, I'd get a battery two weeks and I'd only have to do it again. There is no option for me there, I just have to continue. But hold on, Steve, you could just quit the Marines and leave and not do any of it at all. That's a good way out. Ah, I'd burnt that bridge for myself as well. Before I left, and while I was doing it, I told everyone, I'm joining the Marines and I'm going to finish the training, I'm going to smash it, I'm going to get all the way. I told everyone I could. My mum, my dad, my brothers, my sisters, my cat, my dog. <laughs> I told also the people who were my doubters, the people I didn't really like, but you ended up speaking to anyway in the pub because the beer was flowing. <laughs> and I told them, oh yeah, I'm going to finish it. And I'd be damned if I was going to let them be proven right and I wouldn't complete it. Willpower never came into it. I only had one choice open to me, which was to finish training and get my Green Beret. Willpower is overrated. It's the elimination of choice that will get the results that I wanted in my life. Courage, also mentioned in the title of my speech. I did nothing massively courageous when I was in Afghan. I did my job. I did three tours over there. I did things that the average person would consider brave, and if people told me that they'd done something similar, probably would have said it was brave as well. But I'm sure you can tell where this is going. On one particular little ubiquitous journey mm -hmm. up the Sangin Valley, I was in a patrol of six, six vehicles, and we're heading up, we're just heading from one base to another. Everything is going smoothly, we're ahead of time, June was bursting all around us. <laughs> And the, the radio chatter that we were listening on the enemy, they all said nothing was happening. Ah! Our lead vehicle got hit by a mine. As soon as we worked out that this was not an attack or an ambush, this was just an unfortunate IED strike, I got out of my vehicle and I raced across, because I was the second vehicle on the convoy, and raced across to this front vehicle. Brave. Courageous, stupid. On the first, on the last one, I possibly would agree. Courageous and brave. I hate to use the term, but I was just doing my job. I was the second vehicle, I was the closest vehicle to them. It was my job to go and help. I had no other options. 
these are extreme examples of the point I'm trying to make and the point I'm hoping you'll take away from this. But if you try to rely on willpower and courage, they will unfortunately fail you. However, if you eliminate the options you have in life, you have only got one way to go. I used this very recently, in fact, when I was supposed to be giving my icebreaker at Toastmasters. On two occasions, I, uh, I made up various excuses why I couldn't make it. And finally, I told a fellow Toastmaster, I actually don't think he's here today, which is quite amusing, I said, oh yeah, I've got my speech written, it's ready to go. Any cancellation, I'm in there. Do you think I had that speech written at that time? Nope. No. Thank you very much.